Well, that didn't work out too bad. I wasn't for sure actually if these forks, if I could get up high enough uh, without having to put on my extension, but I was able to get up there just high enough to make it happen. That's all that counts, right? I'm saving this really crooked one for the very front side of the carport. This is the straightest one. The other one was quite curved, so I thought, like I said, I put the curved ones on each end. This right here is a one inch square oak stake that you can actually buy at the hardware store. Um, they used to make tobacco um, sticks out of these as well. Anyway, this is a one inch bit that I'm using and then of course the sledgehammer. This small pallet is kind of the key to standing up there. Really handy to have this to work off of. I've got about the same distance on each end. I just need to center this up just here. I think that's over the post.
Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know what I would do if I hadn't have made this boom. It would certainly, certainly come in handy. Well, so I've got a splice up right up above this post right here. And how I'm going to strengthen that is by offsetting the next group of uh, timbers that actually screw to this I'm actually using one five and a half inch screw right here in this joint just to hold these up here so that one of these doesn't slip off but that side over there is permanent and this will be squared up to that.
Well, this is actually um, a piece of timber that I had laying over there in the wood pile that I wasn't going to use, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use this and cut it off for posts. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of find a, a center line because I don't have a reference since I've got a rounded edge right here. So I'm going to have to mark everything off the center line. I got to take into consideration any bows in it too. First of all, I want to get this square down here on the end. That will start our cut off of each post. Let's see, this end now is going to get a 2 inch mortise. This is the cradle for the top center plate for the roof. You know it struck me that if I just went ahead and made this twice as long and just put both of my mortises together that I could dig most of this out with this in one piece before I actually um, have to cut it off and flip it over and do the other side. So that's what I've done. So I can use this to get most of that dug out. Outlining the end of the hole that I want to cut out so that I don't blow out when I go to digging it out. <laughs> Sounded funny, didn't it?
Well, friends, we had some pretty high winds last night, and I can see a bunch of trees down. So let's go down there and check out, see how bad it is, and count them. Hey, what are we doing? Well, y'all, spring break, day one, and Mother Nature hits at 4 a.m uprooting six. some huge trees. I've got six of them down. One of them is a double. Um, and then I've got three more laying here, is that right? Yeah, and then, and then one. I've got two up there by the new um, workshop that we're building, which is a pretty massive one too. It's laying down. One good thing about it, this is gonna make a lot of lumber. But the, on the flip side of that, I've got a whole lot of work to do before I can even get to church tomorrow. Church, down the driveway, up the driveway. My trek was through the woods this morning. <laughs> and Ray Ray's behind the camera right now and his trek was the same. Yeah, if you want to get here, you had to go way around because all of these trees are laying down blocking the path up to the cabin. Anyway, we're going to get busy here trying to clear a path out so that uh, I have access with the vehicles. Well, this is a root ball off of one of the trees that come down. I guess you can see the other one back over my shoulder up there. And then I've got another one down here that came down with it, as well as some uh, more on the other side of the road. You know, I wonder if my friends will want to go play in the water. So why don't we just ask them and see? Hey, Momo, come here. Come here. Momo, come here. You know what we should do? You want to go to the creek? Huh? You want to go to the creek?
you know i just thought it is the last of march the beginning of april and those ramps that i planted last year should be uh, out of the ground and should be bearing if they took root so i thought well you know what let's walk down there and find out so i'll meet you down there Well, friends, it looks like the ramps did um, produce. They did take hold. I've got two sets, and that's where I set them. And I think this might be a third set coming up right here. Um, but anyway, it's good to know that the ramps will grow here. So I think what I'm going to do, contact my buddy Brian, see if I can come back over and uh, get another handful or two, bring them over here, transplant them. That way we'll have ramps growing over here. If you don't know what a ramp is, it is a wild um, onion, uh, garlic, it's in that family. And I'll tell you what, they're potent and they're really good. And you can find them in the mountains in the last of March and the beginning of April. Well folks, that video, a lot of that was shot before Patrick showed up. But he is here now and he's going to be with us all week actually. And we're yeah. going to try to get the top put on the carport. So um, I'm here to save the day. <laughs> he's here to bail out our bacon fat, just like my neighbor, right? He bails <laughs> my bacon fat out all the time. But anyway, folks, thanks for watching. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.